game engine. So, again, um, there hasn't been much art development at all for this game so far. Everything's represented by just simple primitive objects. We're concerned with functionality right now. So, this square represents the rocket launcher, and these two squares out here, they're just two walls. And these walls have been designed to take damage so that we can measure, uh, here's its damage over here, that's where we'll monitor it. So, uh, the basic way I went about doing this is I created a rocket object, and I'll drag one in the scene real quick so you can see it. So it's just a dummy object. Again, I need to create the artwork for the rocket. To the rocket, I created a script called Rocket. And what this script does is it tells the rocket when it's been fired. It uh, tells it how to translate, how to propel itself. And then when it collides with something, it tells it uh, to first spawn a damage object and then destroy itself. So let me delete that from the scene. And again, if you're kind of new to Unity, uh, these are objects that I created in the editor and then stored as a prefab so I can create them in-game it and whenever I need them. The next object is my blast object. So my blast object uh, is a kind of a null object with a, uh, a script I created called blast behavior tied to it. Within it are three spheres that I don't currently have set uh, to display but I'll turn them on so you can see them. So these three nested spheres, what they do is, the script that governs them, the blast object script, tells each sphere to fire. Once an impact begins and the collision damage object is spawned, the first sphere will reveal itself, then it will destroy itself and reveal the second sphere, which will wa wait a moment, then destroy itself and reveal the third sphere, which will then uh, destroy the blast object. So the reason I did that, uh, and each of these spheres have physics and rigid bodies applied to them, the reason I did that is I want to be able to detect which objects each sphere is colliding with. So for instance, if this blast is initiated near a wall, um, and let's say that that wall is, you know, it catches the outer edge of it. Well, each sphere assigns point damages uh, to the objects it collides with. So for instance, this in this blast scenario, this wall would be colliding with the middle sphere and the outer sphere. So it would get the total amount of damage that each of those spheres cause. Um, I believe the way I have it set up currently is the middle sphere does 40 damage, the outer sphere does 25 damage, or uh, yeah, the inner sphere does 40 damage, the middle sphere does 25 damage and the outer sphere does 10 damage. So if this blast hits the wall directly, that wall is going to take 75 damage out of a total of 100. If it catches the edge of the wall, you know like in this scenario, this wall would receive 75 damage and then this wall only uh, interacting with these two would uh, receive the, um, you know, about 60, 65 damage, I believe, something like that. Anyway, so I'm going to delete that. So again, the way this works is the rockets are spawned at the rocket launcher. When a rocket is told to fire, it then propels itself in its forward axis until it collides with something. When it collides, it destroys itself, but first spawns a damage object. The damage object uh, waits a couple intervals and then, and then uh, reveals the three spheres, which detect the things it's colliding with and assigns point damage to those things. Uh, the other thing about having these be spheres uh, that I can render is I can apply uh, some nice glowing textures to them and create some stylized blasts where it looks like the blast actually starts at an epicenter and then pushes its way out. Um, so I'm going to have fun when it comes time to creating the artwork for this blast. So I'm going to delete this blast from the scene. That was just for demonstrative purposes. Again, that blast object will spawn itself when it needs to. So, I'm going to put my scene view here so you can see the T-Rex everything fully. And I'm going to hit play. Now when I hit play, you'll notice 
this thing loaded up with those rocket objects. I created 16 slots in the rocket launcher and all of them spawn rockets and it will uh, when you click fire it looks for the next rocket uh, in queue activates it and then it launches and then when you uh, collect rockets uh, in the environment it will respawn rockets in the empty slots so let's look at the wall real quick if we look down here at the script you can see its health is at 100 and then if I click back here and fire the blast just detonated and you'll see the health is at 35 so that uh, wall took uh, looks like about two spheres worth of damage the outer sphere may not have not hit it um, and then the wall next to it took 10 damage so it was only hit by the outer sphere so I uh, I may have assigned my points a little different but you get what's going on there and it's working basically whatever's at the center of the blast is going to take the in the full force of damage that the blast has to offer and as you get out towards the edges of the blast the amount of damage dealt decreases so now let me jump back in here and if you were watching the stream earlier you'll know I had problems with rotation and firing and just you can observe that that's that's been fixed all right see now you've seen I, I fired all of my rockets they're all gone these rocket clones you see here are just ones that are still firing off into space. Yeah, they, they got to a distance limit and they just destroyed themselves. That way we don't have a whole bunch of rockets firing everywhere. Okay, so let me jump to... This object, and we're going to look at the uh, rocket behavior script. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, here we go. So we have a little troop false. Do reload. What happens is, in code, when you collide with like a, a, a rocket or any kind of item, the item tells the appropriate script what to do. So, for instance, when I create a rocket, a collection of rockets that you can pick up and reload, the script tied to that uh, rocket's object will tell this rocket behavior script that do reload equals true. When do reload fires, it uh, initiates a function that reloads all the rockets, and at the very end, it sets the do reload back to false. So it's gonna, it, you may not even see it tick. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna tick it, it's gonna reload the rockets, and then it's gonna set itself back to false. Here we go. Boom, just like that. All right, so we reloaded our rockets, and we can fire them off. Um, and it works, even if they're not all full, we can reload. So you can just imagine, as rockets are in the environment and you pick them up, you'll be able to reload them. And it's nice to watch your inventory from the artwork uh, fire, because it's also a nice, it's a visual indicator of what your player's stats are. So, I mean, you could even forgo having like a rocket count somewhere on screen, because you can just look at your rocket pod and know how many you have left or see that you're running low. Okay, so that's been a brief overview of how this 